Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm sure some of you have pets. I have pets. I have a dog. I have rabbits in my house. I have a cat. And uh, the thing is, with most dog lovers out there, they do a number of tricks we want them to. But do they sing? I mean, can your dog sing any song that you want your dog to sing? Can your dog sing any English song, any Hindi song? Any song for that matter, can it sing? And I mean, sing it exactly as it was in the movie or wherever you saw it, with the instruments and everything? I don't think so. But I bought myself a bulldog that can sing or play any instrument that I want it to. And I'm not kidding. So here it is. This is a Bluetooth speaker. So this is, guys, the ST Loop Bluetooth speaker. And I think, as far as I've seen Bluetooth speakers, this is the most unique looking Bluetooth speaker for this price range that I have ever come across. Now, just before we start with the review of this speaker, let me just tell you that originally, while I was researching about this speaker and before I bought it, the original design you know, you have to give credit to this company called Aerobull, which is a foreign company and they make pretty good speakers, Bluetooth speakers and that, this is actually their original design. Now, there are a number of replicas out there and uh, now this is being sold as STU and even if you get links to this, uh, links to Aerobull, it will redirect you to this speaker. But anyways, I got this, but just a heads up, if you guys, if some of you are living abroad or you can get your hands on the original Aerobull, well then get that, but that is far more expensive. But anyway, let's talk about this. So I think I don't need to speak about how unique this looks. It's the head of a bulldog wearing sunglasses. And at the back of its head, where its brain should have been, well, it's got no brain, but it's got a pretty powerful speaker. Now this is a 10 watt speaker, as per the box it came in, that's what they claim it to be. But the inlay card says that the driver is an 8 watt output driver. So I'm a little confused there, but nonetheless, it is loud. But first let's talk about the build quality. So this, I've got the black version with me here. And you also get this in red, which comes in glossy red glossy white and I think just recently they've launched a chrome version which also looks very cool but I got the black one because that was the one which I could get ready and it was next day delivery so I ordered this one and plus I like the feel of matte in my hand it's got a matte rubbery finish speaking of the finish it is high quality it doesn't feel cheap in any way and the whole build is pretty impressive just that at the seams here I don't know if you can see uh, over these parts. It's not aligned that properly, but that's not a problem, guys. You hardly notice it anyway. Feels really good in the hand. It's compact, fits in your hand, like so. And I mean, ever since I bought it, I've been getting questions about what this is. I mean, people have got freaked out, people have been impressed, and when they hear that you can play any song you want, that's an added bonus. Okay. So what do we have? We've got two big ears, but they are just for show. The goggles in front, as you can see here, uh, they look like speakers or they may look like they house some tweeters inside, but they don't. It's just for show. At the back is where you have the main unit. There is a mesh and inside is your speaker unit. And I do not think they have a dedicated passive base radiator, but it still manages, manages to produce some bass, but I'll come to that later. Apart from that, over here you have your micro USB for charging. You've got your SD card slot. And over here you've got a button which is marked as M, which is the mode button. So you can change it from the SD card to Bluetooth and FM. Yes, it has FM, but FM reception sucks. And I don't know if it's just my house, but I've tried it a number of rooms in my house and the reception wasn't good at all so I mean it's good to know that it's there but I don't think it's that useful so I'm not really going into that 
Apart from that, you have a power button as well, right here. So the power button also works as the play and pause button when you are using playing some music using Bluetooth or your PF card, whatever card you put inside. The power button pressing it once will pause it, pressing it again, we'll play it again. So there is no other play pause button. That power button doubles as that switch. Now on top, on its head, as you can see, it's got these markings right here. It's a little embossed right here, but this is the main part. So this is the skip track and rewind track button. Mind you, these are not tactile, clicky buttons. These are touch sensitive, like feather touch. So if you want to increase the volume, you just keep your finger on top. You don't even have to press it really. You just keep it on top and the volume increases. Keep this, keep your finger here, the volume comes down. Press it once, goes to the next track. Press it once, goes to the previous track. As simple as that. So that is with the overall functionality of this. Now, under its chain, right here, there are two LEDs. One of them lights up when you switch it on. And the other one, when you're in Bluetooth mode, the blue light keeps blinking when it's searching for a device to pair with. Once it finds, it becomes constant. So that's how you know. When you're charging, the, blue, the red light is constantly on while you're charging. Charging takes uh, around three and a half hours or so. I mean, more or less. And if you're playing at 70% volume, it should last you a good four hours. At full volume, that just comes down. I mean, it claims to have a six to 10 hour battery backup. Six to eight hours, sorry, but at, if you want to play for 8 hours, you have to keep the volume to around uh, I don't know, 20% or 30% which is really low. But at 50% or 70% you can look at 3-4 to four hours of audio playback. And uh, it's pretty light. I don't even think this is... I, mean, I, I think it can be what? Maybe 250 grams or I mean same as my phone. 250 grams or so. It's pretty light, small. But damn is it unique. Anyway, so let's get into the sound. So I'm just going to long press the power button here. It's got the window sound for some strange reason. As you can see, now it's in Bluetooth mode, so it's searching for a device to pair with. And let me just quickly pair it with my phone. Okay, now the strange thing is when you turn on your Bluetooth and you're searching for the device, it comes up as AeroBull and not LS2. So that's kind of weird, but okay, so that means it's paired. And uh, let me play some copyright free music. It's a pain with YouTube and copyright free music. But one thing, mind you, which I've realized is since the speaker unit is at the back, the sound is unidirectional. So it just comes out from this side. So people sitting in front are going to miss out on the whole spectrum of the sound or whatever it is. But people sitting on this side will get the full blast, the full range. Let's hear a few tracks and then I will get back to how it sounds, what's bad, what's good. I'll give you my verdict. So I am going to hold it like this. down okay, it's at full volume from uh, my phone and I'm i 
somewhat of an idea, although it will never do justice because you're listening to this through my microphone. So let me give you my verdict. I don't know if it's a 10 watt or an 8 watt speaker, but what I do know is that it is loud. Okay, so I mean hands down, this is loud. Second, the highs are pretty decent, but not the most clear that I've heard in a Bluetooth speaker. The mids lack a bit of body. It's, it's bright, mind you, I mean, because it's loud, so the highs and mids sound bright, but it's not of the best quality that you could ask for in a Bluetooth speaker. And as to the bass, like I said, uh, they don't mention if it has a dedicated passive bass radiator, but it does have some bass. It's not flat by any means. I mean, my JBL Go, that is flat. I mean, there is absolutely no bass, but this definitely has some bass, but at full volume, which you were listening to right now, the bass gets a bit muddy and it sounds a little distorted, just a tad bit. And at full volume, the highs, if it's really uh, loud on the track, it could distort or there is a bit of a rattling, but not on all tracks, mind you, few tracks. So the sound out of 10, I would give it a six, Okay, that is above average. It is not crap by any means. It is not bad by any means, but it could use some polishing. The highs and mids could have been a bit more uh, refined and the bass could have been more clean because it has bass, it just could have been a bit more clean. It's not really punchy and the sound drum from Portronics, the Boldstone 600, 700 give you that punchy bass, bass from different tracks. This does give you that bass, but I think, at least for me, my personal opinion, it left me thirsty for just that bit more bass and I wanted that to be a little, a little clean. So that's my verdict. But guys, apart from that, this is such a unique speaker. I mean, it's definitely the most unique speaker that I've owned and it looks really cool, whether on the desk, or on the shelf or it just looks cool and if you guys want you can check out the link for this is in the description below make sure you check out the various color options that are available and the latest like I said is the chrome color which is also really cool but those are glossy and hence attract a lot of fingerprints but if you want it you can go for it and uh, the price for this when I bought it was $17.99 so that's 1800 bucks and if you ask me is this the best speaker for 1800 bucks? No, it isn't. There are definitely much better speakers out there 
for this price point or even cheaper. All right. If you are spending 1800 bucks on this, you should definitely see the Bose Tone 600, the Bose Rugby, the Protronic Sound Drum. I mean, if it's in this range, those are definitely going to sound better. But if you want something so unique, you should definitely get the Ellis Troop Bluetooth speaker. It's by far the most fun speaker I've owned and feels so good. And yeah, it, I mean, you can freak out your parents by just having both of this head in your hand. So it's kind of cool. Anyway, guys, that's been it. If you have any questions regarding this speaker, do let me know in the comment section below. And subscribe to your Time today if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you've liked it. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.